So why am I switching from Acorns to M1 Finance when I've been investing to Acorn for the past year and I've gotten back around 21% back on my investments? You might tell me, Tommy, you're crazy. What's going on? Stay with Acorns, getting you money. The answer is I have no loyalty when it comes to companies because I only care about one thing and that's the best return for my money. And you should be the same way, guys. Now, the first thing is this, guys. I haven't switched just yet, but in this video, I'm going to break down the pros and the cons to M1 Finance versus Acorn and why I'm thinking about switching. Now, if you guys don't know me, my name is Ty Bryson. I'm an accountant and I upload videos every single day. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you get notified. On top of that, do me a favor and smash the like button. And here's a question for you guys, okay? What do you currently use for investing? Is it Stash? Is it Acorn? Is it M1 Finance? Comment down below, let me know. And if you ask me, guys, in reality, I have zero loyalty to companies because I believe that it's all about where the best deal is. And I also believe that these companies, they want you to have loyalty to them by saying like, hey, we'll give you a debit card, a credit card, a savings account. We'll give you everything so you don't have to go anywhere else. But in reality, that does not mean they have the best deal for all those products. So I stick around for my investment for the best product for that. And I go for my credit card somewhere else, my savings somewhere else because I want the best product possible on the market comment down below and let me know if you agree with me or if you disagree with me now i want to jump in straight into the video and talk about m1 finance what i think about it the pros and the cons and also acorn the pros and the cons and which one am i going to invest the bulk of my money going forward today now the first thing is this guys m1 finance is a pretty good good platform you invest in the pies you buy whatever you want to buy stocks etf which sounds very good but it's also very complicated because again if you don't understand it, you'll have to go to YouTube, watch tutorials, try to find out, figure out how to buy stuff, how to build a pie, a portfolio. It's very complicated. It took me an hour to figure it out. But once you get it, you get it. So there is a learning curve, but once you get that curve, you're good to go. And it's pretty awesome, honestly. So the first thing I did, guys, is I actually went into M1 Finance and I created a carbon copy of my Acorn portfolio. So my Acorn portfolio, I have a carbon copy of it inside of M1 Finance, which is pretty cool because I won't be charged a $1 fee anymore. Oh my God, $1, $12 a year. Oh my God, it's crazy. Now, the first thing is this, guys. However, you might say, Tommy, you know, with M1 Finance, I like it because, you know, you got stocks, you also got ETFs, you can invest into retirement accounts, all the fancy stuff. But in reality, guys, I don't recommend M1 Finance for investing into stocks, and here's why. We all know that stocks... And invest into stocks is a time-sensitive thing because you need to catch that stock at the right price at the right time. Now, the problem with this is that M1 Finance, well, they do fractional shares, so they also have trading windows, meaning you can only buy during a window of the day. Beyond that, you can't do it. So, for example, it was about Saturday. Well, not Saturday, around like Friday. You know, Fitbit was bought out by Google, and my stocks with Fitbit actually rose up by around 15%. Now, if I had M1 Finance and not Robinhood, I would have had to wait the entire next day to actually buy investments into Fitbit to actually get a part of the chunk of the money that was being made so fast. Meaning that if you want to buy something and it's time sensitive, I don't recommend M1 Finance because you can't just buy it real time. So if you want to do time sensitive investments, I highly recommend Robinhood for this. Okay. Now, if you want to buy ETFs, M1 Finance is pretty cool because again, M1 Finance, fractional shares, and on top of that, you get trading windows. That's fine also. But ETFs don't really move like this, okay? They go like this. You know, like you know, like when somebody's like um in the in the in the hospital and it's kind of like this, like it's just like that, you know. ETFs don't really move that often, but stocks go like like this sometimes, okay? So you want to catch it at the right time, and you can't do that with M1 Finance, and neither can you do it with Acorn. So again, two cons, and the pro is you get to build pies, which is awesome, but there's a learning curve, so you have to learn how to do everything from the very beginning. Not that bad at all, though. Trust me, you can learn it. Now, the second thing I really love about M1 Finance is basically, you know, I'm an investor guy and I invest 5% of my income into these entire investments, ETFs and stocks, blah, blah, blah. Well, only ETFs to be honest with you. But guys, I do 5%, but however, every now and then I run low on cash and I want to be able to borrow against my investments without having to sell them off, okay? Because it's a big commitment. So with M1 Finance, you can actually borrow against your investments. However, though, as a catch, you need at least $10,000 inside the account and you will be charged around 3.5% interest, which is not that high at all. Now, with Acorn, 
Sorry, you can't do that. You can't borrow against your investments unless you sell them off. And that's kind of like a big con for me because with M1, you can borrow against that and just like pay it back without having to sell your investments only for 3.5% a year, which if you know anything, well, that's pretty low. Pretty low, I'm not complaining about it. Now, the main thing is this guys, every now and then when I run low on cash, I wanna be able to go out there and you know, borrow against my investments. That way I can invest into real estate, invest into whatever business I want to invest to, or buy something I want to buy to then flip it over and over and over to make more money. And by the way, you know, with Acorn, I'll give you the pro here. With Acorn, you can leverage it when it comes to like having a mortgage and your portfolio and having that money, but you can't really get hard cold cash out of Acorn without selling your investments. However, with M1 Finance, you can actually do that. Now, I do want to clarify something, guys, okay? You might say, Tommy, $10,000 is not a lot of money. That's fine, it's a requirement. But in reality, me, myself, Tommy, okay, I make around 10K every single month and I only have around $7,000 invested currently because I only do around $500 every single month. Now, you might say, Tommy, that's pretty low, bro, but to get 10K into an investment account and not really need it, that is a lot of money, especially when you have like other investment portfolios and other investment opportunities outside of like investing into the market. So for me, 10K is a lot of money, but being able to take money out at any time to actually use it for whatever I want to use it for, that is awesome. Now, a tip here, guys. If you have massive amounts of credit card debt, you might want to like invest with M1 Finance and then grab that money, refinance it with 3.5 versus 19.99 with a credit card. Now, one thing I do have to say, guys, if your portfolio falls below a certain amount of money, well, they will sell off some of your investments to actually, you know, even things out. So you always want to keep vigilant of what's going on with your portfolio. That's why my portfolio doesn't go up and down like this because I only invest into ETFs. So stocks don't really matter to me at all when it comes to M1 Finance, especially since it doesn't really matter because you can't do real-time investing, which is a really big con if you ask me. Now, number three, guys. Something I really like about Acorn is that they have a $1 fee, okay? Tommy, come on, bro. We know the $1 fee, it's not good. We don't like it. Now, you might say you don't like it, but I like that um, Acorn knows how to charge the customers to get money from them, and I appreciate that, okay? So $1 fee is not that bad at all, if you ask me. Now, with M1 Finance, you might say, Tommy, M1 Finance is free. You can do the exact same thing you can do with Acorn for free. Now, that's correct. However, though, Sorry to say, but M1 Finance has a very mediocre product when it comes to a debit card, trying to charge you around $125 for a debit card. Why? I don't know, but I will break it down later on in the video. However, guys, I do want to say this, okay? I don't like this crazy fee because $125 is way too expensive. And I have noticed that although, you know, M1 Finance doesn't charge you a fee, they try to get interest from you, from like your portfolio. They also try to get, you know, like a fee from the debit card. So they're trying to figure out how to, you know, monetize you guys, but they don't know how to. I like that with Acorn, you get charged a dollar, that's it. You know how to get money from you? That's fine for me. But I don't like how M1 Finance doesn't really know how to get money from their audience. Thus, I don't know what's gonna happen with the financials of the actual company M1 Finance, okay? Now, as a bonus, guys, I do want to say one thing here is that, you know, I love how M1 Finance makes it easy to transfer over from Acorn to their platform without having to sell your investments, which sounds pretty awesome because if I want to, if I want to like switch over completely, I can do that for free, no problem, and still keep all my investments just the same into one portfolio, which that's awesome, M1 Finance, great job with that, but now I want to get into what Acorn lacks versus what M1 Finance lacks because, again, no product out there is actually perfect, at least not yet at all. <laughs> not not yet at all, guys. So let's get into it, okay? Now, we all know that with Acorn, they lack the ability of having a savings account and also a savings account without this entire like $2 fee for this debit card, which I don't like. But again, it's only $36, well, what is it, like $36, yeah. It's only like around $24 or $36 a year versus M1 Finance's 125 for their debit card. So again, not that bad, but so far, you know, I don't like paying fees to actually get a debit card. That's why I don't have one. And all I do is just invest with Acorn. On top of that, you can leverage your money, like borrow against a portfolio to actually get that money out and invest somewhere else. They don't allow that whatsoever. Thirdly, guys, I don't like how they don't give you the ability to actually, you know, like, um, like, you know, like alternate between the percentage you want to put into one category and one category, one ETF. They don't give you any freedom. It's like, hey, you want this, you want that. That's about it. There's no freedom whatsoever. 
and when finance does give you freedom which is awesome however i would like a feature in acorn that does let you select like hey i want to do more into voo or this etf right here instead of just like taking all my money and doing whatever you want with it okay i want that feature asap and i also want the feature to be allowed to borrow against my portfolio and charge me interest yes but i do want to borrow against my portfolio without having to sell my investments that's a huge deal for me and i'm pretty sure it's a huge deal for most of you guys out there now i also want to get into what m1 finance lacks because again they're not a perfect product either now they lack the ability <laughs> to collect revenue from the audience, from the users, with a good idea, okay? Everything about the M1 Finance Plus is just terrible. I'm sorry to say that, okay? It doesn't work, it's just not good at all. It doesn't make any sense for me whatsoever. So I wanna go into it and talk about exactly what I think about the entire like pros and the benefits of M1 Finance Plus before I tell you what I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna keep Acorn, if I'm gonna keep M1 Finance. Now, the first thing is this, guys. You pay $125 a year as an annual fee for a debit card. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You know, you know, Dave Ramsey must really love this debit card. Okay. Now, the first thing is this. Tell me, it gives you 1.5% um, APY on your check in. So that's pretty awesome. Well, it's a check in. So you won't really keep money in there as often because you'll be moving in and out. So 1.5 isn't really that good because with SoFi money, you get 1.6. And when you sign up, you get $100 when you deposit $100. So on top of not charging you a fee, they also give you 100 bucks. Link down below if you want to join. You get 100 bucks when you sign up for SoFi, okay? Which is pretty cool if you ask me. Now, Tommy, they also give you 1% cash back on your purchases. Isn't that awesome? I guess, but to actually get back that $125 fee, you have to spend around $12,500 in one year. If you ask me, that is way too much money. Why not just use my credit card and get back five points or 2% cash back and not have to pay a single fee on it, okay? So again, that's not a bonus. That's why I don't like it. Number three, guys. Well, Tommy, you know, um, the card is made out of metal. I don't care. It could be made out of diamonds. I just, well, maybe diamonds, I will sell it. But it could be made out of the, the, like um, sulfate, um, the hardest rock out there. I don't care. It's a debit card. It's not supposed to be like, oh my gosh, look at this entire metal card. I don't care about it, okay? I don't care what it is. I'm not going to pay $125 just to get a metal card in my pocket. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Now, Tommy, but what about, you know, they give you 4X on ATM fees. So if you use it four times a month, you get back your money um, with the ATM fees. Isn't that awesome? Like four times a month? Well, no, not really because with SoFi money, they give you free ATMs worldwide and they reimburse you that same time well in real time basically so if i use the my entire like debit card in the atm i get the money right back from that fee like this anywhere in the world okay africa um third world countries anywhere in the world you go you can get back your atm fee from sofi money again 100 when you register i highly recommend it i have some money myself for my debit card and daily use now tommy but they don't have a minimum balance Everyone does that too, okay? There's no minimum balance for any card out there. No one has no balance anymore, okay? Including SoFi, no minimum balance. Now, you might say, Tommy, but with a debit card, you can invest with it also and spend money, and that way you have, like, best of both worlds. Well, with SoFi, you also have an investment account. Acorn also has a debit card, and Robinhood now also has a debit card. So this is not new. Nobody cares about that feature anymore. It has to be something a lot better. But Tommy... It's also FDIC insured up to $250,000. Well, with SoFi, you get up to $1.5 million in FDIC insurance, okay? Now, Tommy, you also get a 0.25% discount on your loans when you actually borrow money against your portfolio. SoFi has a feature also does the same thing for student loans, um, personal loans, whatever you want to do. Again, guys, my whole point is this, okay? SoFi is free for a debit card. It's my favorite debit card out there. Plus, you get $100 when you sign up and you deposit $100. But with um, with, with M1 Finance, they have this entire like, um, program here trying to collect money from you guys, but it doesn't make any sense because it has a whole bunch of free features and they charge you an annual fee for it when it doesn't make any sense whatsoever, okay? Tommy, they also give you a trading window. I don't care. It's not real time, so it doesn't really matter at all. So, in conclusion, guys, Tommy, what do you think about the entire concept of M1 Finance and Acorn. What are you gonna do here, bro? Cause it sounds like you don't like it, but you have an account, so what's going on? So to answer your question, if I'm leaving Acorns for M1 Finance, the answer is 
Currently, I'm not, but I want to keep my options open because right now, M1 Finance is pretty cool. The free version of it, not the M1 Finance Plus. I hate that stuff. But for right now, I'm going to use Acorn until I hit $10,000. And once I do that, if they still don't have a feature where I can actually borrow against my portfolio, I might switch over to M1 Finance so I can borrow against it. And that way, I'll be better off in the long run. Now, Tommy, what about SoFi? Will you be getting the M1 Finance Plus card or will you stay with SoFi? Now, with SoFi, when I signed up, I got a hundred bucks, okay? For free, for depositing a hundred dollars. On top of that, I get all the features that M1 Finance Plus has for free. And I also get to talk to a financial advisor for free and gives me financial advising advice for free. So the answer is no. I'm gonna keep SoFi because I can go anywhere in the world and get my ATM fees um, reimbursed to me just like that in one second. On top of that, Tommy, what do you think about your credit card? Will you stop using it to use this entire like 1% cash back on a debit card? Well, bad news, Dave Ramsey. I will not be using this card. And I will say this, okay? I think Dave Ramsey will disagree with this and he'll be like, okay, Tommy, you're right with this one. Because again, why would I pay $125 to then spend $12,500 just to get back 1% cash back to match what I spent on that fee? It doesn't make any financial sense, okay? So in conclusion, guys, M1 Finance, cool for what it is, just for ETF investments because you can't do real-time investing. So I'll do that eventually to actually take advantage of the borrowing feature. But for right now, I'm sticking to Acorn until I hit like 10K, 20K, 30K, 40K, 50K until I actually need that money to invest into something else. So that's my answer. Comment down below. Let me know if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, like the video, really appreciate it. Also, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you get notified. And if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, uno uno, just DM me on Instagram, Tommy Bryson. And if you want to watch my videos, for example, how much money I made from Acorn Portfolio in one year, take this video out right here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the channel right here with my face. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching and...